Yes, Chef! With Ryan. Are you already eating, Ryan? Is this your New Year's resolution? Let's not talk about the food. Let's just eat it. (laughs) How are you doing? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So we've got Chef Ryan back on the show, obviously for 2018. Uh, Many things are staying the same. A few little minor tweaks here and there. But we couldn't get rid of Yes Chef, our favourite corner, which we upload onto YouTube every single week. We talk about seasonal ingredients, some delicious Korean dishes. Uh, Today it's the former, I guess, winter ingredients, winter comfort food. Mm. Sweet potatoes are the star with Chef Ryan today. Mm, mm, mm. Wowzers. I am a massive sweet potato fan ever As since you I was young. Be. Yeah. As you should be. It was one of my favourite things about winter rolling round coming out to Korea was finding the roasted uh, kogumas or sweet potatoes and the roasted chestnuts. Yeah, both of those yeah, are great. I love and, them. And they're called chestnut uh, sweet potatoes or they're called pumpkin sweet potatoes. Yeah, the varieties here usually yeah. fall into those two, right? Yeah. The hobak kogumas which is the pumpkin one. Can you tell which one's which? Uh, oh, are these two different ones? Well, of course. You think I would just bring in one oh, boring type when we got... Of course not. You brought in both. So the other one is called the palm gogoma, the right, chestnut. Right, right. And I often find the uh, hobak one, the pumpkin one, is a bit more moist. Okay, yes. So I'm going to say mm. this moist-looking one on the left-hand side is the pumpkin and the palm which looks a bit drier on the right hand side is the chestnut uh, sweet potato make sure you turn on video radio now by the way because right. we've got the camera in the studio i'm right <clears throat> yay and i way no. prefer the pumpkin one i must say the moist really same sweet here. same here yeah. yeah i do i guess i guess the other one has good uses though too you know if you if you don't want all that moisture if you want to I don't know, maybe roast it off and, and mash it or something like that. Yeah, I but, suppose um, so. Oh, a mash, a sweet potato mash. That would go mm. nicely, wouldn't it? Oh, sure. They're, you can use these so many ways. And they're, man, they grow really easily. Uh-huh. Um, my favorite thing here, you're talking about the winter. Yeah. You know, you, you come into some places, you go to visit somebody's farm. Uh-huh. Or, and they'll often have like a pot belly stove, like okay. a heater. Yeah. And they're just sitting on the top. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? In the foil sometimes <clears throat> or sometimes not in the foil. Right, right, right. You'll just go in some place and they've got a few sitting around just, just slowly, you know, <laughs> roasting on there so that you can enjoy them as a snack anytime. Yeah, in some places, the barbecue restaurants where you've got the real charcoals in the bottom, they'll put them in there in the I, foil. And every single time I burn. <laughs> you I leave burn. them in there too long. No, no, no. I don't burn them. I burn the roof of my mouth because oh, really? I, I go for it and I'm like, and I... And I do it every time because they're coming out. That's how I did these. I did uh-huh. these on, uh, I was doing a little rooftop barbecue yesterday. Nice. Got some massive steaks. And, okay. And then I threw these in the in the charcoal underneath. Mm. And you just kind of leave them there. I mean, they were there. It looks like this one got a little dark on one side. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's really hard to mess them up. You just yeah. leave them in there, you know, 30 minutes or so uh, next to the coals. But do be careful. Like you said, you can easily burn your mouth or your fingers when you're peeling oh, them, man, right? every time. Because you're, because you're, you finished eating your your maybe galbi or whatever it yep. may be and then you pull out these foil packets and open them up and you just want to dive in and mm. yeah they're so lava, good lava um, hut by that time though you're already really full but you can always make room for some extra sweet potato it's insane some of my friends when they came over from the uk they're like how can you still keep eating after we had all that steak the rice the soup the side dishes now mm-hmm. a sweet potato and i was like give this a try and they were blown away because sweet potatoes here are different to the ones we have in the UK. Like in the UK, a lot of them are really orange, like yeah. really yeah. orange, and yeah. they don't taste as good. Yeah, I don't think they're as quite as sweet. I think these are a little bit sweeter. That, that looks amazing. This is the chestnut one. That's right. That is a really moist chestnut one because sometimes you get the really dry, you know, the pale yellow ones that I'm talking about, that when you eat them, they're really super dry. These look so, so lovely. They're almost the same color inside. Yeah. You, you do find uh, different colored ones, you know. Um mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smells so, yeah, yeah. so good. So, do, do sweet potatoes differ in the US as well? Are they a bit different to the Korean ones? Sure, and we've got yams as well, you know, the great big suckers. We, uh-huh. we never really see smaller ones like this. Yeah. And, and um, you know, we don't enjoy them enough, I think, in back in the States. Sweet potato um, pie is something I hear bandied about a lot in the oh, US. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that it's a lot dish, like pumpkin pie. Is it quite common? 
Yes, around the holidays. Uh-huh. Um, uh, there were some places back years ago that started doing baked sweet potatoes, you know, with butter and, and cinnamon and dark brown sugar. Like a jacket potato in yeah. the UK. Ah, that's right. I with heard a about normal those. potato. Yeah, we right. cut that open into like fours and then in the middle put some cheese and butter, maybe baked beans. Right. That's really good oh, as well. Oh, you guys and your baked beans over there. Yeah, yeah I know. Like... I had some for breakfast this morning on my toast. <laughs> they taste so good. Um, but uh, yeah, in Korea, there's... I don't know. Is there much that we do with these? Let, let's let's try and enjoy these first. Like uh, this is the chestnut one, which yep. looks absolutely delicious. And you've, like you said, you just roasted this on your charcoals, but you can put them in the oven. I think right, that's always right, the best right. way. Some people boil them or steam them as well to keep them nice sure, and moist. They right? can be steamed. Yeah, just roast it off. Mmm. Oh, these are so good. They're really sticky, sweet. Yeah. Mmm. Like I love them when they're this wow. moist. I don't oh, really like them good. when they're really dry. So this chestnut one is really moist. Like I would have said if I'd eaten this, that this is a pumpkin one. Does the flavour actually differ a bit as well? I'm I'm positive. That's yeah, because I wrapped those up differently, so I'd be able to tell. Mm. Yeah, I want to I want to check that one out too, because the color is kind of fooling me. Sometimes there's hybrids too. You know, uh-huh. you'll find some that are a little bit in between. And you know, one that I've seen in Korean uh, marts recently is the mm. purple variety mm. of sweet potato. Have you seen that the purple one? I have. Looks almost like a beetroot or something. Yeah. That's, is that another hybrid kind of thing? Um, I believe so. And then also whenever you find purple uh, plants, purple uh, fruits and vegetables, uh-huh. they're usually high in an- antioxidants. So. Okay, so very good for That's your health nice, as yeah. well. I'm going to try now the uh, hobak one. To me, Ryan, this looks more like the chestnut one in terms of it looks drier than the other one, but let me give it a try. Oh, no. Pretty definitely sure. the flavor. Right. And it is actually moister Sweeter. than it looks as well. Yeah. This is definitely the pumpkin one. Uh, mm, the pumpkin's texture is much more soft. Let's give. I actually prefer today the chestnut one you've picked out some beauties are there any tips when picking Mm. sweet potatoes like at the supermarket absolutely it is really really important i was just Mm. talking to a friend about this too Uh uh-huh if they have any kind of scratches on the outside, uh-huh. they can go bad really quickly. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. If the skin is like pierced or something? Right, right. Oh, right. So you want to get one that. That, that, you know, has the skin intact. Okay. And then it'll last longer. But if you're going to use them right away, it really doesn't matter that much. Okay. Um, Just pick yeah. out a big batch. Because sometimes they're really thin and weedy and they look like fingers. And sometimes they're the big fat ones. I guess that just depends on how long you're going to cook them for. Right? Oh, that's true. I do try to find them that are kind of uniform shapes. Cause, okay. Because you don't want, you know, one end to roast faster than the other other yeah if you're gonna roast them whole yeah so this is such a simple Mm. delicious winter Mm. staple i think you can get these all year round here in korea absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. i mean this is um this is kind of famous as one of the best crops to grow if you like you're in a starving situation you know they're hardy yeah they grow really quickly and Uh easily okay? okay they don't require a lot of maintenance and then also they're loaded with all kinds of vitamins and minerals that you don't get from just a regular potato, uh-huh. like vitamin C. Okay. There's a, there's a long list. Um, so that's where uh, I think a lot of the sweetness and flavors come from, the the goodness that's in there. They, mm. they are better for you than just a, a normal white potato, right? Big time, yeah. Yeah, oh, they are so delicious. Mm. And you've brought another dish here. Maybe we'll talk about this in part two, but I'm just trying no. to think of other ways we eat potatoes here. Oh, one thing that I like is the tigim. You know, you get it in mm. like tempura or a batter a lot of the time in the That's crispy right, batter yeah. if you slice it up yeah, my mum does that often it's delicious oh you really at home yeah I only ever really see it on the, in the street food yeah my mum likes to deep fry at home because she doesn't like eating out and that's like one of her specialties but it is a lot of work in the kitchen your kitchen gets yeah, super messy yeah the oil everywhere yeah. popping yeah. we did the fried chicken and the sweet potatoes over the weekend like she was mm. it's New Year's let's do it and it's so crispy and fluffy inside uh, that batter uh, I guess the t- to that is again like hot and fast with the oil and everything yeah get to get really... that to really stick as it's as it's frying you, know, uh-huh. you want it super hot and fast it's yeah. delicious oh these are delicious and don't they have that one in Korea you know I see it uh, sometimes in the basements of department stores you get it in a little paper cup and the uh, kokumas are cut into pieces like this but they're mm-hmm. kind of isn't it matang or something that's right is yeah. that this that's what this is yeah. oh, I see that's one of my yeah. favorites all right so we're going to go through that recipe in part two uh, for the time being let us know how you enjoy sweet potatoes in your country uh, how you enjoy them personally as well and uh, anything to do with our hashtag today which is interest and we'll be back after a song break we're gonna play Koguma 
Pekke. So Sweet Potatoes 100 by Kim So Hee and Kim Shi Hyun. We're back for part two of Yes Chef, and uh, as of today, it's a new year. Yesterday we had Just Jerk, so it wasn't our regular second hour, um, but we're going to have our three parts in hour number two for all our guests, starting off with you, Ryan. You're our kind of test tube today, uh, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed, we're going to save what's in your fridge for part three. Mm. So anyone who's got ingredients in their fridge and it's the start of the new year and you can't be bothered to come up with a recipe, let us know what those ingredients are and Chef Ryan will come up with some delicious recipes for you to try I'll in part best. number three. Yes, you will indeed. Uh, we're talking all about sweet potatoes or koguma in mm. Korean. Oh, what a lovely photo for our Yes Chef uh, post on social media media mm. that potato looks delicious but i've got to say you've chosen some absolute peaches today you know how what a cool food you know there's no salt on here there's no sugar on here yeah. there's no oil there's nothing it's just wrapped in foil thrown in the fire and if you didn't have foil you could just throw it next to the fire mm -hmm. and then just you know peel it and yeah. you're good it's uh so simple right yeah if you said to kids these are bad for you stop eating them they would love these as like <laughs> junk food, wouldn't they? Um, but even so, my kids do like this as a treat from time to time. Mm. Um, I do encourage them to eat more, but because they know it's healthy, they just won't eat that many, and they'll ask for like some snacks. <laughs> I've heard of a bunch of kids being that way. It's so strange, but because they're they're awesome. You've got to say to them, it's bad for you. It's yeah. going to take you to the dentist. Then they'll want it. <laughs> then it'll be like a drug to Reverse them. Reverse psychology. Absolutely. Today's hashtag, by the way, Ryan, as we're starting 2018, is hashtag interest or kwanshim in Korean. Mm. And we're asking our listeners um, for the new year, what do you want to be more interested in for 2018? What's it for you? Oh, man, that's tough because I'm already doing all this stuff that I'm really interested in. <laughs> this is true. Um, I, I guess uh, I was talking with friends about, um, you know, kind of New Year's resolutions. When I, I just want to work more with with my favorite people. You know, I just want to oh. do more things with uh, with really great friends that are they're also chefs or or in the, the food and beverage industry and that's or nice. and or farming stuff, too. And okay. just do more group projects with people that. That I really respect and, and admire. You like working together as like a team. There are Absolutely. some people who prefer to do it themselves, you know, because they get all annoyed at others interfering and stuff like that. But you like coming together. Well, you might compartmentalize and like I might focus on this aspect. Uh -huh. But I find when you have somebody to bounce ideas off of yep. that has kind of a similar knowledge to you mm -hmm. on uh, maybe if it's about food, you know, someone who's also into cooking a lot yeah. and you can bounce ideas off each other. That's where the really interesting new ideas mm -hmm. come from. That's so if true. If it's just me, I, you know, uh, like... Like if I'm if I'm sitting with a friend and looking at the what's in your fridge, yeah. I can come up with more ideas because I'm thinking about what they're thinking yeah. as well as what I'm thinking. That's then, so true, right? Yeah, Two yeah. heads are better than one in yeah. many situations, especially if you're all experts in your field. I can imagine you come up with some amazing stuff. Well, I hope yeah. you don't abandon us and get too busy this year. No, fun, absolutely okay? not, man. You're our special yeah. corner. No, it's too much <laughs> We've got a couple of messages to read out as well. One from Annie in Singapore who says, Good morning, Chef Ryan and Peter. I love sweet potatoes. I like to eat sweet potato soup dessert. Mm. Soup dessert? Mm. Wow. I like to make baked sweet potato fries. Oh, that's my thing. That's been trending now for a good few years. That's sweet right. potato fries. My yeah. favourite, but absolute fail when I do it at home every time. Oh, uh, maybe maybe you just need to soak them longer. Soak them in water. water. Yeah, or really? salt water even, uh, and then rinse off the salt. Because uh -huh. uh, they're really, really starchy on the outside. Uh -huh. Often, not all sweet potatoes. Some are more starchy than others. But but by doing that, and I kind of... <laughs> I kind of messed up here. I didn't soak them long enough. So you can see, if you look closely on these, or if you can see, there's kind of a, a little bit of extra starch on the edges. Okay. And that's from not soaking them long enough. Oh. Is that a bad thing to have the starch on the edges? I can see it, yeah. Well, it's going to drip. Oh, oh, it's all right. It's all over my script anyway, and my fingers. Mm. Um, is that an undesirable thing to have? 
Well, it's not it's not real common for for the Korean style of this side dish. But oh, I see the mud tongue itself, right? Still tastes great. Um, and Annie says that she likes to cut the sweet potatoes into strips and rub them with olive oil, mm. then pop them into a toaster oven to bake. It's a oh, healthier cool. alternative to fried chips. Yeah. So don't some places deep fry them though? As Absolutely. Well? And yeah. that's when they get really crisp on the outside. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, that's what I find really difficult to do at home. I don't think I have a deep enough fryer and hot enough oil at, at home to do it. They always come out really, I don't know, a bit soggy. Well, try try this way with the, with the olive oil and then pop it in the oven. Sounds it does too work healthy. Well. Unlike my kids, I need it to be unhealthy. As Siska says from Indonesia, sweet potato, love it. Here's sweet potatoes at Ubi Jala, uh, one of the favorite mm. ingredients here. We also have sweet potato with real natural honey inside. Wow. wow. It tastes like some of these sweet potatoes do have honey, right? They're so sweet, yeah. It's amazing and we just steam it and the honey melts inside i posted some of my favorite cake desserts in indonesia made by sweet potatoes here and they look amazing some donuts as well and chewy sweet potato balls wow Mm. Mm. you always seem to have such amazing food in indonesia siska i'm gonna have to check it out one day how do you say sweet potato uh, ubi something. That sounds good. Ubi jala. Ubi, ubi jala. jala. <laughs> it rolls like off the tongue, doesn't it? Um, okay, so now getting on to our second dish here, Ryan, which I'm going to yeah. try while you explain exactly how to make this and what it is. Okay, super, super easy. You're going to peel and cut your sweet potato into um, pieces this big. Sometimes I see them a little bit bigger, mm-hmm. but not much smaller than that. Mm. And uh, Lovely. That's nice, right? It's so good. What is that cinnamon or something on the a outside? A little bit of cinnamon, which, mm. which you don't always find here but you okay. often do um it's uh, yeah so peel cut them into chunks then you're going to deep fry well soak them first soak uh-huh. them in the water maybe some salt water get some of that starch off maybe how about long? 30 minutes okay yeah uh then you know change that water rinse them uh let them let them dry a little bit because if you drop them with a lot of water on them right into hot oil it's going to pop everywhere okay um but then yeah get them into some hot oil um, fry them for probably about five minutes. Yep. Okay. Then take those out, put them on a, on a paper towel to kind of dry a little bit. Then take a little bit of that oil, the frying oil, and put it into a, like a fry pan and maybe just a couple of tablespoons if you have maybe two or three uh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. And then put some sugar uh, or honey or some kind of, you know, I like palm sugar. That one's really good. Coconut sugar is really nice. Oh. But here in Korea, usually it's just, just sugar or yeah. like a rice syrup. And you're going to let that become a sauce, the oil and that sweetener. Uh-huh. And then um, once that, if it's sugar, it's got to melt down, right? Yeah. And then once that's melted down, toss your sweet potatoes back in, mm-hmm. toss it a few times, and you're done. Really. And a lot of the places that sell them in the uh, underground parts of the department store, they almost look like they've been glazed. They're super right, shiny right, there. Right. And sometimes they have a crunch to the my, outside, like it's glaze, candy. I made almost. this last night. My glaze fell to the bottom. It it's did in fall there. to the bottom, but it's, it's delicious at the bottom. And the potatoes themselves, with that hint of cinnamon, There's you're right. There's a puncher right there. Oh, yeah, it's nice and crunchy at the bottom. Oh, wow. You could eat that mm. as a bit of candy. Uh, it tastes really good with the cinnamon, like a touch of cinnamon in there. Yeah. A lot of the places here don't do that. Mm, I love it. That's so you know, simple. In in Greece, too, and I love doing this. You could do this at home. Uh-huh. Take your sweet potatoes, and I'll just wash them really well. I won't even peel them. Mm-hmm. Slice them into rings, kind of like a, a centimeter or two thick. Rub them all with olive oil. Yeah. But then sprinkle on a mixture of nutmeg, clove, allspice and cinnamon oh and it's kind of a greek style and um just have it and then put it in the oven uh-huh. roast it off until it's soft oh. and it's awesome that way that sounds delicious just use the natural sweetness from the sweet potato you don't even add any more sweetness but that combination of of spices is really nice it, these ingredient i think is the best for rookie chefs as well because it takes no preparation if you don't want to do anything. Just chuck it in the oven or you can steam them, like we said. Mm. Um, if you want to do a little bit of jazzy stuff, then try this. That's known as the mat tang mm-hmm. uh, that we just explained. And we were talking about them being kids' snacks, healthy kids' snacks earlier. Do mm-hmm. you know what I've seen a lot is the dried, like semi-dried sweet potato snacks coming out. Right, yeah. A friend gave me some of those recently, and they're super chewy. They are really chewy. So they've been dry to a point yeah. where... 
they can keep for a long time. Mm -hmm. Is that possible to do like at home, dry it like uh, a dehydrator, or if you leave uh -huh. your oven cracked and just put it on a low setting and, and just leave it going for a really long time? It yeah. basically mimics a dehydrator, especially if you've got a conve convection fan. In the uh, I see to get rid yeah. of the moisture and stuff. Yeah, that should work. Um, those are half dried. The snacks usually. Yeah, and and I will say if you find some of those, a nice little hint to them. I like to. T they were just too chewy, too gummy, too <laughs> chewy for me. They just get stuck in your teeth. But if you take them and put them in a dry pan for a little bit, yeah, then they'll kind of crisp warm them up. up like yeah, that. Oh. or even in the microwave, warm them up, and then the chewiness is is diminished quite a bit. Well, that sounds like a good idea yeah, as well. It works. You'll see them all over Korea as a healthy alternative to potato chips. My kids absolutely devour those. Uh, we're going to play a song and then we're going to do what's in your fridge in part three. So if you want to check out this video, it will be uploaded onto YouTube shortly. Just type in Yes Chef. And if you're watching on YouTube, why don't you listen to Arirang Radio's hashtag Daily K every single day from 9 a.m. talking all about Korean culture for two hours a day. Here's Seventeen's Aju Nice. Very nice. We're back for part three. Yes, you heard us right. Part three of Yes Chef, where we're going to deal with what's in your fridge. First, we got a message from Will in Canada, who says, Good morning, Ryan. Happy New morning, Year. Man. I would like to wish you a great 2018. You make the second hour awesome. Thank you for everything that you do. And Sweet Potato, one way that I personally really like it is when it's mashed with maple syrup, mm. butter, pecan cinnamon mm. it turns out to be like a dessert instead of yes. a main course item yes that sounds but so for a mash with sweet potato is it similar to just normal potato mash when you're doing it yeah i mean you can add all kinds of cream if you want i love the the reminder of the pecans will i love that too when you got putting that in toast, the mash well no 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 or but, sprinkle but it just in. like a baked sweet potato and then you uh -huh. open it up and put Toasted pecans, oh, wow. maple syrup, butter. <laughs> oh man, that's that's a great way to do it. That sounds really decadent, oh. doesn't it? Lovely. For them, if you wanted to do a mash, yeah, you can do it just like a just like a mashed potato. Adding adding butter, adding fat. Uh -huh. It's it's a great idea. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good as well, doesn't it? Mm. Um. So now on to what's in your fridge. We got a few to get through, Ryan. Yeah, we do. Where here. do you want to start? Um. Let's see here. What which one did I look at first here? All right, Roz. Roz has got a good fridge here. Uh. Pineapple, fresh pineapple, just picked. Blackberries, wow. raspberries, green onions, zucchini, mushrooms, cranberries, turkey breast, almonds and cashews, bread crumbs, butternut squash, onion, lemon basil. Thanks for those seeds, by the way. Uh, pineapple sage, all kinds of teas, uh, Asian sweet potatoes. Oh, so you could do these dishes Ooh, we have today. Nice. Um, actually, though, I got an idea. Okay. If you take uh, the almonds and the cashews and toast them up a little bit, mm -hmm. and then if you got a mortar and pestle, just like grind them. If you put them in a food processor, they're going to turn to powder. Okay. I don't want them to be powder. I want them to be like little pieces. Uh, about the same size as your breadcrumbs. Because okay. you're going to mix those together, put in a little bit of salt and pepper, and make that into a crust onto the turkey breast. I'm hoping the turkey breast isn't cooked, but it, yeah, let's let's just assume it isn't cooked. Okay. Um, so make it into a crust on that turkey breast. Uh -huh. Put a little butter in a pan and, and get the butter a little bit brown and then sear that crust into First. the turkey breast. Yeah, on in, in that butter. Okay. Flip it, get the other side, finish it off in the oven. Okay, so now you have an almond and cashew butter crusted oh, turkey breast. Okay. Awesome. Crispy, crunchy. Now, to go with that, the nuttiness there, the almonds and the cashews, what could be really good is take your fresh pineapple, the pineapple sage, and the lemon basil, and you can make a little sauce out of that. Um, a warmed up, uh, let's see, if you just chop, you don't you don't really have to cook it much. You just want to warm the, the pineapple. Mm -hmm. um, you might want to add a little bit of salt um, and maybe a tiny bit of... What kind of vinegar? Maybe like a white wine vinegar, just to just to balance off the sweetness of the pineapple. Uh -huh. um, but then get those herbs in there, uh, toss that around, and you can put that right on top of that herb crusted uh, oh, turkey breast. That'd be amazing. If you wanted to do a side dish to go with that, I think the sweetness, the natural sweetness, and the butternut squash roasted off. If you um, take, you know, the sweet potatoes too, but butternut squash, anything you want to roast off. If you just rub it in oil and put it in the oven, it speeds that up because the oil on the outside uh -huh. is helping conduct the heat into tip. the vegetable faster. So oh, okay. um, that's a great way to do it. And those would go, that'd be a nice little winter meal. I know you're in Florida, so it's not that cold, but still a nice <laughs> little seasonal winter meal. A crusted turkey.
turkey breast sounds yeah, amazing. With cashew. I've never done it, but that, that would work. Yeah, with the nuts there. Nice. Yeah. Okay, next up. All right. Okay, we've got in Spain, we have... Ah, oh, what is this? This is oh, Tasha's odd, this, is Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is Tasha's. Yeah, with bread, gluten-free cheese, uh, different kinds. We've got tomatoes, meat. We've got chicken sausage, ground beef, and pre-marinated stuff again. <laughs> uh, eggs, egg whites, duck eggs, Greek yogurt, butter, uh, black olives, fruit, 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 potatoes, cucumber, ginger, lime, cow, soy, and coconut milk, and lots of chocolate. Okay. Ooh. Um. Okay, take your cucumber yeah. and run it through a cheese grater. And then uh, throw it in the bin. I hate cucumber. <laughs> take, your, take your cucumber. Sorry. <laughs> you I can't... really hate cucumber. Yeah, I really. I'm going to eat some tomatoes in 2018, too. but not yeah. cucumbers. No, no way. <laughs> well, I'm using both in this okay. one, so, right. so plug your ears, Peter. <laughs> um, take your cucumber, put it through a cheese grater in the largest uh, holes on the cheese grater. Okay. Then, um, then sprinkle it with salt. Okay, and then let it sit. Mix the salt into it a little bit. Let it sit for about 10 minutes. What that's going to do is pull all the water out of the cucumber, or most of it anyway. Uh And then you're going to pick up all that cucumber and just squeeze it in your hands and squeeze out as much moisture as you can. Okay, Then you're going to be left with like just uh, the, the meat of the cucumber, right? Take that with your Greek yogurt, put that together, chop up a garlic clove, really mince it up, mash it up really well. Put that in there as well. If you've got some nice olive oil around, get that in there. Basically, you've just made tzatziki. Oh, okay. nice. Homemade. Yeah. And that's that's so awesome with the ingredients you have here. You you do that. That would go really well with something with the ground beef, with mm-hmm. the chicken sausages as well. You know, the Greeks do a lot of, of grilled meats. Yeah. And tzatziki is a nice way to balance off the saltiness that's in those grilled meats. Um, so you've got some gluten-free bread that would go really well with tzatziki. Um, then also the cheeses and, you know, if you just take the cherry tomatoes and slice them up, then basically you've got, you know, cherry tomatoes, tzatziki. If you want to do the ground beef in a Greek way, you could, um, it really doesn't matter that much. I would, what I would do is maybe make little patties Uh and pan fry them and just get, uh, get your onion in there. Um, maybe even the black olives too. That would work. Sounds like a lovely Greek healthy meal on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, one last, what's in your fridge we can uh, fit in from Audrey, I suppose, from France, right? Okay. Yeah. Audrey. Hey, we've got, uh. Chicken breast, codfish. Oh, man, there's so much good cod in the market right now. Really? It looks, Is it cod time? Yes, it looks okay. so great. Okay, passion fruits. I wow. love passion fruits. You do? So good. So sour. Wait a second, though. This is blowing my mind. What? Have you had them fresh? Like, we open up the fruit? Yeah. And you're not disgusted by that? The seeds were a bit weird the first time, but I love them. I am so confused by It was because your... I was on my honeymoon. I was open to everything. Okay. That's the first okay. time I Wait, had did it. you go to Brazil or someplace? The Maldives. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have pa- Oh, of course they do that's yeah, right it's so good i man when i was living in brazil we would eat them all the time and we had the trees juice there. sure sure we'd have the juice all the time oh, so but the good. first time i had the the, the fresh one uh-huh. i mean it's like it's like gooey yeah something it's a bit like that. not though like yeah. how gooey the taste it's funky is, right? but it is really good and it's called passion fruit you know why is it an aphrodisiac well possibly i know that it it, it slows down your heart rate it oh, calms you down really it chills you out nice yeah. okay Can and we actually incorporate it Sweet potato somehow does too. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, okay. So passion fruit, mango, uh, <laughs> some oranges, some ginger, some lemons, uh, sweet peppers, carrots, leeks. Um, my goodness. Okay, what are we going to do? Um, you know, I've done I've done a chicken breast with a passion fruit sauce. Really? It, it wasn't good? It mm. wasn't the <laughs> best. But see, passion fruit kind of has a, a, a citrus kind of element to it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, you talk about orange chicken. Um, yeah. You could totally do that. I, you know, that's what I would do. I would take. You could do it with a fry, the codfish too. Oh, oh yeah, check surely this out. that that sounds nice. Yeah, so fish and chips, right? Yeah, cod is one of the best fish for definitely. Fish and chips. So 100%. You, it's just flour and beer, uh-huh. you know, and a little salt. <laughs> flour, beer, mix it up, yeah, and you've got your beer batter. Yeah, um, take your cod and or the chicken breast and get that beer batter on it, fry it up nice. Oh, nice. But take the passion fruit. Yeah, and you probably have to. You know, you could even use the mango as well, but I would just stick with the passion fruit on this. It could be really cool. Definitely get some lemon and a little bit of. 
ginger in there though. And, and you might have to sweeten it up. You might have to add some honey or some sugar Mm -hmm. and you're just going to cook it down into like this glaze and then toss when that stuff comes out of the fryer. Yeah. Sprinkle a little bit of salt on it right away and then toss it in that glaze and you'll have like a, like a tansuyuk or like a sweet and sour chicken, sweet and sour, you know, fish and chips. I feel that would really work with the uh, fish especially. Not the healthiest thing I've ever given you, Audrey, (laughs) but uh, it's winter time. It's a good time to... You know, have some uh, comfort food like yeah, that. Yeah, and some beer batter as well. Yeah. Uh, we do actually have time for Siska's fridge. Just quickly, Ryan, if oh, we man, can do her ingredients. Oh, man, put me on the spot. I don't so, have a chance to look at this. So okay. it's dory fish, potato, carrots, tofu, uh, apple, banana, chicken breast, chocolate milk, peanut block seasoning. Oh, my lordy. <laughs> dory fish soup that she has left over. Oh, my lordy. Yeah, that's difficult. Oh I am putting you on the spot, aren't I? Um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Peanut block seasoning. I think that is uh, the uh, satay, right? Okay, um, that they use for the sauce. Yeah, it's so it's really good with coconut milk, not so much with chocolate milk. <laughs> um, chocolate and peanut go well together, though, don't they? <laughs> well, let's let's try something crazy here. Um, chocolate, peanut block seasoning, bananas and chocolate milk. Am I nuts? You are nuts. Am Go nuts? for it, Ryan. I'm thinking, um, have you ever had bananas foster? No. Okay. Imagine something like this, but with bananas instead. With our sweet potato matang. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yep. cinnamon and, and sugar and, and lots of butter actually. And it's in case. Yeah. And you're frying up these bananas uh-huh. and then you, you know, add a little rum and flambe that up. Yeah. Um, if you, if you took your bananas and did something like that, I wonder if that, cause you know, peanut, ban- peanut butter, banana sandwiches, but I bet that peanut block seasoning has other stuff in it. It would be kind of salty. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly Give what peanut try. block seasoning is, but I want to try something weird with the bananas and the peanut block seasoning because I really would like to know how those would work together. I've never tried anything with that yet. But okay, Siska, you try that for us and please yeah. post up a photo of your reaction like a little mukbang. Yeah, uh, Ryan, please. that's all we got time yeah. for this week. Okay. Uh, you'll be back with a new ingredient and dish next week. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. Have a great 2018. Uh, you too, man. Happy and we look forward to seeing you every single week. Uh, We're going to play some uh, This is a Mango by Samuel Sartre.